So school is starting back in two weeks. And before you dive head first into what could be the most challenging four years of your academic life, there's something that you absolutely need to know. And trust me, I wish someone would have told me this before I start my engineering journey. So in today's video, we are going to talk about 10 things that you absolutely must know before starting your engineering college. All right, so everyone agree that engineering is probably one of the most difficult major. You probably hear different statistics about the engineering dropout rate. Some source claim that it's as high as 40 to 60 percent, but a recent study from Purdue University suggests that the engineering retention rate is actually similar to other majors. What is true though, that is many engineering students do switch major, especially in their first year, often because they underestimate the workload and they realize their interest lies somewhere else. But why is engineering so difficult? Make a video where I go in depth into the reason why, but in short, you're dealing with complex math and physics concept that is building on each other. If you miss one foundation block, suddenly everything else became much harder. And then there's the workload. We're talking about 15 to 20 hours a week you spend on doing your homework. And on top of that, there's group projects and lab report that you have to write. It's like a never ending cycle. And let's be real, the grading system is quite brutal. In some classes, a 65% might be considered an A because the material is just so challenging and everyone just doing bad on the test. Some professor have to curve the whole class to get everyone to pass. Your high school studying habit, you're probably gonna have to throw that out the window and adopt a new one. But here's the thing though, all of that hard work will pay off. It will be worth it in the end. The problem solving skill that you develop the analytical thinking, the ability to tackle complex problems, these skills will serve you for life in everything that you do, not just in engineering. Okay, let me bust another bubble. Engineering alone will probably won't make you rich. So if you decided to go into engineering because of the money, I'm sorry, but you won't be rich if you just use your engineering college degree alone. It really depends on what you define rich, but normally living rich meaning you have a luxury car, a big house, and a vacation home somewhere. And you can buy anything without thinking about the price. Well, engineering won't make you that rich, but engineering will give you a comfortable salary. And what do I mean by comfortable? Your average starting salary can be anywhere around 65k to 80k or sometime higher, depending on what industry your job's gonna be in and where you live. That's pretty good money, don't get me wrong, you're not buying any luxury yacht anytime soon. But here's what awesome about the engineering degree though, it will give you an incredible foundation for businesses. Engineers are often highly motivated individuals who think systematically, they're understanding how to build and improve system, and they're natural problem solvers. These are the exact skill needed for you to become an entrepreneur. Looking at some of the big names in tech, Jeff Bezos, he have a computer science and engineering background. Larry Page and Sergio Brins from Google, they both have engineering backgrounds. So my point is your engineering degree is not just a ticket to a normal 9 to 5 job. It's a toolkit into building the next big things if that's where your ambition lies. Now that I probably demotivate you from engineering, let's talk strategy. One of the biggest mistakes I see new engineering students makes is not taking control of their schedule. You need to be very strategic about these stuff. First thing first, picking your classes. You can use website like Rate My Professor. The difference between a good and a bad professor can make or break your semester. Look for professor who explain concept clearly and are available during office hours and have a reasonable grading policy. Keep in mind though, when you get to the upper level classes, your choices of professor might be limited. There's some professor who sometimes would teach like multiple upper level classes. So keep that in mind. Another thing you can do is balancing your workload. You definitely should talk to your academic advisor about this, but be aware though that some advisor, they don't have a background in engineering, so they don't know which classes are difficult and which ones aren't. They might advise you to take too many hard class in one semester. So please look out for yourself. Don't just take four hardcore engineering classes 
in one semester if you can help it. Mix in some like general education class and some elective class to give yourself some breathing room. Here's something that might frustrate you. It definitely frustrate me at first. You won't use everything you learn in college in the workforce. So why did they make a study so many advanced level math classes? Because most of it won't apply directly to our day-to-day -day jobs. Well, these classes are not useless. They are also called the weed out classes. Learning these concepts develop your analytical thinking. It teaches you how to solve complex problems. Passing these classes means that you're putting in the hard work. And the student who drop out of engineering college or switching major, they are the one who can't pass the weed out classes. Plus, you never know when that random knowledge might come in handy someday. I've had moments where something that I learned in a seemingly irrelevant class suddenly clicked and it helped me solve a problem at work. Okay, this next one is huge and I wish that I understood it earlier. While you obviously need a decent GPA to graduate and to get a job, employers care way more about your technical skill, what you did, than your GPA. And yes, that 4.0 GPA is very impressive, but if you can't show me a project where you built something, whether it's using SolidWorks to model your design, to come up with a prototype, 3D printed out your prototype, you can build a code in Python to solve your own problems and applying knowledge practically. If you can't show me any of that, you're going to be very less interesting to the employer. So you can start with building your portfolio early. You can do some personal projects. Look up on YouTube on some projects idea for your own engineering major. You can join design team, participate in competition like Formula SAE, which is very popular at my university, or you can join a robotic competition. You can get internship even if they are unpaid at first. So start looking for internship as early as freshman year. And yeah, you probably won't get one, but practicing by applying and interviewing those skills are very invaluable. And by junior and senior year, you will be a pro. And if you're lucky, some people get their internship as early as their freshman year. So you never know what's gonna happen. Next, remember when I say your GPA are not as important? Well, you still need a very decent GPA to graduate and to get a job. So here are some practical studying advice. Use study group and go to TA hour religiously. Engineering problems are often designed to be very challenging to one person, but to a group of people, they can be very manageable. Different people understanding different concepts and the process of explaining things to each other really reinforce your own learning. So find a good study group early, find the people who are serious about learning, not just copying each other homework, meet regularly, either in the library or at the coffee shop, not just before the exam. And take advantage of TA hours. They are basically free tutoring. And who can hire a tutor in this economy? So TAs are usually just PhD student or master degree student who already took the class. They will definitely know where you struggle. They remember what was confusing and can often explain things in ways that might click better than the professor pro. Please don't wait until you're drowning to start using these free resources. Go early and go consistently, even when you think that you're understanding everything. There is always something more to learn. And if you want to know an effective way to study as an engineering student, I make a video explaining how, so make sure to check out that video. All right, the next thing that you need to know is networking is absolutely crucial in engineering. And I don't just mean handing out your resume at career fairs and collecting business cards. You can start with being friends with your classmate. You never know the person sitting next to you in fluid mechanics might become your coworker someday. Start by building a genuine friendship and start helping each other studying together, not just a transactional relationship. Also, don't ignore the upperclassmen or the underclassmen either. The upperclassmen can give you the inside scoop on professor, on what internship to look out for, and what to expect in each class. The underclassmen might need help tutoring, which can sometimes make you a little bit of money, but also reinforce your own knowledge and build relationship. And get to know your professor. And get to know your professor. They have the industry connection you wouldn't believe. Some of the best internship and job opportunity came through professor recommendation. For example, at my work, 
my boss, who is an engineering manager, who is also working part time as a college professor at a local university. And usually during the summertime, he would bring in the student that he teach in his class. We usually just interview them and normally give them the intern. You can also join engineering society at your university. Societies like ASME or Women in Engineering to get a leadership role and participate in competition. I joined one at my university and I became the president at that club. We bring in company like Boeing or Texas Instrument to come and talk to our members, and our members can、um, networking with them. And some people actually get an internship through these events. Every interaction is a potential door that opens up to your future career. The next thing that you need to know is don't neglect the soft skill. Engineering have a stereotype of being very socially awkward and introvert. I am definitely guilty of that. But in the real world, you have to communicate your idea clearly. You need to work in team and collaborate with others, and sometimes lead projects. So practice public speaking.、Like、going back to joining clubs at your university where you have to present something or working on your written communication, you will be writing a lot more emails or report than you expect. Learn to work with people who aren't engineer. You will collaborate with like marketing teams or sell people, which I do a lot. Managers who don't have a technical background, being able to explain complex technical concept in like simple terms is a superpower. Don't be the engineer who throw a technical solution over the wall and expect everyone else to figure it out. Be the engineer who bridge the gap between technical and non-technical knowledge. The next thing that you need to know: your first engineering job probably won't be designing rockets or revolutionize technology. It will likely be something more mundane than you expect, unless you're very lucky, which congratulate to you. Most engineering jobs happen in the office, not in lab or on the manufacturing floors. You will spend a lot of time in meetings, writing emails, and working on incremental improvement of an existing system. Your first job probably won't be your dream job, but that's okay. That's completely normal, and it's just a stepping stone. Most engineer change jobs every three to five years. Especially in their early career, each move will get you closer to what you want to do. The work can be repetitive sometimes. There will be days where you're questioning why didn't you just switch your major to something else, and this is completely normal. Every career has boring day, but remember you're building experience and skill that open up to better opportunities. That mundane first job teaches you the industry practice. Professional communication and real-world problem solving that you cannot get in school. Finally, remember that engineering isn't just one job. There are so many different paths that you can go into with your engineering degree. You could be a design engineer, which is what I'm doing right now, actually designing new products or a system, or application engineer who helps the customer implementing technical solution and quality. Or you can be a quality engineer who focusing on testing and improving manufacturing processes. There are research engineer who working on cutting edge technology that no one have their hands on yet. Or sales engineer who need a technical knowledge to sell complex product, and consulting engineer who solve problems of multiple companies. There are roles like project management, technical writing, patent law, or entrepreneurship. All of these can be a great path for engineers. And don't feel like you have to figure out the exact path before you start. Use internship and informative interview to explore different options. Your interest might change as you learn more about what's out there. So there you have it: ten things that you must know before starting engineering. Is it challenging? Absolutely. Will there be moments where you're questioning your life choice? Probably a lot. But engineering will give you the problem-solving skill, the analytical thinking skill, the financial stability, and the ability to make real impact in the world. The key is going into engineering with real expectation and a solid strategy. Use the resources that is available to you. Start building relationship. Don't just focusing on grade. Focusing on the actual learning, and don't forget to have fun while you're in college. Make sure to check out this video where I rank different types of engineering majors. Feel free to debate me in the comment section if you disagree with me, and I will see you in the next video.